Hello and welcome to a new Ukraine war update. Today's update is special because it's the first one in which the number of helmet camera videos surpasses the number of drone videos. As always, this update includes recently released videos and attempts to provide some context to the events. Every like and comment is greatly appreciated as they significantly help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you in advance. This video you're watching depicts Ukrainian soldiers storming a tree line held by Russian forces in the Bakhmut area. The video is quite brief, only showing the soldiers advancing into the tree line while firing extensively into the wooded area ahead. It's evident that they don't have precise knowledge of the Russian soldiers' locations, prompting them to blanket the area with gunfire to compel the Russians to adopt a more passive stance, aiming to evade the bullets. This helmet camera video shows a group of international fighters serving within the ranks of the Ukrainian army as they conduct an assault on Russian-held trenches. The fighters dismount in the open right in front of the Russians and begin to storm their positions. The video was recorded by members of the Chosen Company, a volunteer group composed of military veterans fighting in the 59th Motorized Brigade against the Russian invasion. You can find the commander of this unit on Twitter where he goes by his name Ryan O'Leary. There you can also find ways to support this unit. This video is a longer version of a short 20 second long clip that got released some time ago if I remember right. It seems that this video had to be cleared for release first due to operational security reasons. While the men you see here are certainly speaking English, they are not part of the International Legion, but of the Ukrainian army as said before. Similar to the previous clip, we can observe a substantial volume of gunfire being directed at the Russians once more, aimed at suppressing their movements. From the footage, it is evident that the Ukrainians launched their attack from a disadvantaged position here, as their surroundings consisted essentially of nothing but an empty field they had to traverse to reach the Russian trenches. Speed is crucial in such a situation, and being exposed in the open for too long is undoubtedly a frightening thing. Consider the possibility of enemy drones dropping grenades on you. Also, operators can crash an FPV drone into your squad anytime. Furthermore, there is a significant threat from mortar and artillery fire. Considering the lack of cover and concealment, the danger of getting hit by a bullet is consistently present. However, leaping into an enemy trench is also fraught with risks. There might be mines or booby traps concealed within and around every corner. A weapon could be poised, waiting for you. This kind of work demands a great deal of composure under extreme pressure, and the experience these men accumulate during this war is currently second to none. It definitely should be in the West's interest to establish the conditions that guarantee that as many of the Western volunteers currently engaged in combat in Ukraine can return home safely, with the practical knowledge they have acquired on the front lines. Having practical knowledge in stabilization operations, which are mostly asymmetric in nature, is one thing, but engaging in a peer-to-peer -peer war is an entirely different story. As said before, this battle took place some time ago but was just freshly released so I included it here in this update. Really intense footage if you ask me. Russia in general responds to Ukraine's frequent attempts to push forward with artillery fire. In this clip you can see a Ukrainian unit operating under such conditions. Luckily no one on top of the vehicle had a close encounter with shrapnel here. The persistent possibility of artillery bombardment can have a negative impact on the psychological well-being of soldiers. The stress and anxiety arising from the uncertainty of shell impacts, occurring without warning, can result in reduced combat performance and lowered morale. Nonetheless, it seems that Ukraine has recently intensified its efforts in the south and is attempting to increase the pressure on the Russians. In this video you can see Ukrainian special forces in combat with Russian troops in the area of Robotyny. While the town was recently captured, this video was most likely filmed some time before this, since parts of it were already released before. Same like with the video showing the Western fighters, this video was just released as it is a few days ago. It is common that videos from operations take some time before they can be released, especially when they are filmed in contested areas. Currently, Ukraine is under a slight time pressure as their offensive is progressing slower than anticipated, and the weather is soon expected to change to conditions that will make it more challenging to advance. Therefore, they are attempting to make as much progress as possible as quickly as they can. However, the Russians have entrenched themselves quite effectively and heavily mined the area, as we are all aware by now. Additionally, drones pose a constant threat and make it challenging to efficiently consolidate forces. They can drop ordnance, crash into targets, spot enemy forces and direct artillery fire. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please let me know by leaving a comment. Additionally, I would appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up.
You really would help me out a lot by doing so. Also, if you watched till now, I wanted to say thank you. You really keep this channel running. Here we have a decent quality video showing a Ukrainian mechanized assault on Russian positions in the area of Bakhmut. We can see a number of vehicles advancing towards an open field while engaging a tree line in which Russian forces are located. They even fired a mine clearing charge but the video cuts off and we cannot see what it hit. What I find particularly interesting is this scene here where we can see a Ukrainian BMP coming under what looks like artillery fire before dropping off soldiers who are about to storm the tree line. Looks like two squads were dropped off to attack the Russians here. This clip is quite surreal, in my opinion. Filmed by a Ukrainian drone, it shows a Ukrainian unit encountering a group of retreating Russian soldiers. This unfolds where neither party initially notices the other. The drone captures the Russian group moving past the Ukrainians, who cannot see them due to the dense foliage ahead. Shortly after the Russians are about to pass them entirely, the Ukrainians open fire on them, taking out at least two Russians in the process. Scenes like these are the ones that, in my opinion, deserve more attention. The battles are one thing, but many incredible things happen in the fog of war, as seen here. It is also a reminder to all the people who comment on a lot of helmet cam videos, suggesting that soldiers are shooting at nothing. It's not that they are shooting aimlessly, but rather that they often cannot see their targets due to concealment, like the foliage here. This video here is a continuation of a previously posted clip within another Ukraine war update, which depicted Ukrainian forces engaged in heavy fighting in Klyshchevka. As mentioned previously, the quality of helmet cam footage recently released by Ukrainian forces is truly remarkable. While a significant portion of the video showcases firefights I have already reported on, it remains intriguing to observe them in more extensive detail. For the most part, the recent footage of fighting in Ukraine has been dominated by drone videos, primarily depicting the destruction of military equipment. Watching helmet cam video serves as a reminder that this war is also being fought by the average soldiers on the ground, risking their lives for every meter gain. It's easy to overlook this reality through the detached lens of an inexpensive drone. Presently, Ukraine maintains a foothold inside the town, and every Russian attempt to counterattack thus far has been thwarted. However, the Russian 83rd Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade still holds parts of the town and is reinforced by the Rosgard unit Ekmet in the north. Currently, Ukraine maintains a foothold inside the town, and every Russian attempt to counterattack thus far has been thwarted. However, the Russian 83rd Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade still holds parts of the town and is reinforced by the Rosgard unit Ekmet in the north. Further south, the Russian 72nd Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade still holds Andrivka, and the whole sector is reinforced in the rear by the 4th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade in Odrivka and the 80th Guards Tank Red Banner Regiment in Opitny. Russia has also published helmet cam footage from Klyshchevka, showcasing a sniper in action. The video was geolocated to be approximately in the same area where we witnessed the Ukrainian soldiers engaged in the previous clip. All in all, this update doesn't feature much Russian footage. Some individuals might now accuse me of lacking objectivity, but the reality is that there simply isn't any usable recent Russian footage available. It's already quite challenging to provide commentary for my uploads, as mandated by YouTube, without becoming overly repetitive. However, there's only so much one can discuss regarding Lancet strike videos or FPV drone attacks. At the end of the day, most videos from both sides are only released under the premise that they provide as little actionable information as possible. This is done for operational security reasons. Typically, they are meant to show only that we are here, we are working here, attacking, holding off the enemy, or making progress. As you can guess, this makes it challenging for a channel like mine, which focuses more on the micro level of this conflict through footage released from the front lines. This is especially true since I have to provide more commentary than is usually necessary. So, for the few people who are always complaining about the commentary, I have to do this because YouTube forces me to. This is not a complaint by me, I am simply only stating the facts. Here we see a video of Russian forces towing away a captured Dutch YPR 765. They seem quite proud of it, most likely because it is Western gear even if it is older lower tier equipment. Do not get me wrong, these M113 variants have proven that they still can do their job but they are no Bradley or Mother. And here we have yet again another of the many helmet cam videos released by the infamous 3rd Separate Assault Brigade in combat on the southern front of Bakhmut. While this footage is a few days old, the fighting in the area continues. On August 29th, Ukrainian military forces carried out offensive operations in this sector, 
and seem to have made progress. Colonel General Oleksandr Siusky, the commander of the Ukrainian ground forces, also confirmed that Ukrainian forces are making advances in unspecified areas in that direction. The Ukrainian general staff also reported that offensive operations by Ukrainian forces are ongoing to the south. On the other hand, Russian sources claim that Ukrainian forces are persistently attacking in the vicinity of Klyshchevka. Furthermore, a Russian source asserts that the fighting is still occurring to the west of the klyshchevka andreevka kurjumivka line, which is positioned 7 to 13 kilometers southwest of Bakhmut. Likewise, on August 29, Russian military forces also conducted offensive operations on this front, but no confirmed advances were made as I said before. According to the Ukrainian general staff, Russian forces attempted unsuccessfully to carry out offensive operations near Bodanivka as well as Osarianivka, situated 14 kilometers southwest of the city. A Russian source claims that Chechen Akhmet Spetsnaz units and the 4th Motorized Rifle Brigade of the 2nd Luhansk People's Republic Army Corps have made progress by advancing to the heights near Klyshchevka. Additionally, several Russian mill bloggers assert that Russian forces have launched counterattacks near Klyshchevka and Kurdjumivka. Currently, I have not seen any visual confirmation of this. The progress of Ukrainian troops is still slow but steady. Over the last week, it has been reported that Ukrainian forces recaptured one square kilometer from Russia in that direction. It has to be said that there are large numbers of Russian fighting positions scattered across the entire area and these positions have to be cleared by infantry one by one, which can be a lengthy process. Nearly every tree line is occupied by Russian troops who are attempting to buy time until the weather changes and the terrain becomes more muddy. I stated this when the offensive began and I can only reiterate it. This is not a rush B scenario and military operations like these are far from resembling video games. Numerous factors come into play and you can't merely sprint through the area quick scoping enemies. Your gear is weighty, exhaustion sets in, the enemy takes cover in trenches, artillery barrages target you and aiming your weapon isn't as straightforward as you might assume, particularly under stress. Every meter you step forward could be mined and drones are flying above you. I do not want to sound like a smart ass here, especially since I know that a lot of people who are following this channel might already know this and perhaps even experienced it themselves, but you would be surprised how many people draw a wrong picture of war because of video games and movies. Especially the exhausting battles in trench warfare are very different in reality from what films or games might convey and even these videos here cannot depict the entire picture. The smells, the waiting and the constant uncertainty are difficult to capture. These videos can only give you a sense of what it looks like. This short clip for example could be filmed over a period of several hours with breaks between the fighting and we only get to see a little fraction of it. It does not capture the time in between. These soldiers literally live in their fighting holes for days and weeks while being under constant pressure by drones and artillery. Still getting a little sense of it is better than no sense at all if you ask me. This video showcases tanks from the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade launching an attack on Russian positions in the Bakhmut area. The clip truly demonstrates that despite all challenges, tanks are not yet obsolete, it's just that the conditions for their safe deployment have changed. Naturally, future tank designs need to adjust to these conditions, but I don't anticipate tanks disappearing anytime soon. Some comments on my recent uploads have mentioned that I am occasionally delayed with my updates. This is primarily due to YouTube kicking me out of the news business when this war began, allowing tabloid newspapers to fill the gap I left in 2022. It honestly doesn't make much sense for me to attempt to match their pace, as YouTube's requirements hinder me. I'm obligated to include lengthy commentary, while they can simply write a single sentence in the description when they repost videos from their original source one-to-one -one without anything added by themselves. I understand I've shared this explanation many times before but it seems that some people still overlook it. For me, it's currently more beneficial to focus on the footage rather than the breaking news aspect and to cultivate a community. This is a thing I've neglected for years as I always wanted this channel to provide raw access to information without placing myself or my opinion and personal beliefs in the limelight. However, this approach has somewhat backfired many times so now I'm essentially starting over again even with over 2 million subscribers. Also, the algorithms are currently very hard on me and the impressions my uploads receive are at an all-time low. Even if I would be the first to report on an event, the video simply would get buried. The Prigozhin case is a good example for this. I was pretty quick here but YouTube simply did not show it. Trying to be faster and better, as I was for nearly 10 years, has become a battle against windmills and I need to find a different way to solve this issue. I already have taken the steps but I currently cannot talk about it in detail. Again this is no crying or complaining but a situation report.
That's it for this Ukraine war update. The last two updates were shorter due to time constraints as I had some personal matters to attend to. If this video was able to provide something for you, I would appreciate any like and comment. This is the only way this uploads become visible to a wider audience. If you want to see more like this make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and enable all notifications for this channel. That way you will not miss any new Ukraine war updates that focus more on the footage and the news articles. I will link the last Ukraine war update here in the case you missed it. If you want to support me further you can do so by buying me a coffee. This financial support helps me to become more independent from YouTube. Thank you very much for watching until the next time.